everybody and welcome back to more than just a dog my name is Kayla and today I'm showing you how this thing helped me improve Maya's call to friends so let's get started okay so I'm gonna say this and you guys are gonna be like duh but Maya has a long back right Pembroke Welsh Corgis are a long backed breed and they're not the only ones Basset Hounds have long backs and short legs Dachshunds Dandy Didmont Terriers by the way if you're competing with a Dandy Didmont Terrier I want to see videos or pictures or something because that's adorable. Long back breeds tend to have more of a challenge in sitting front and sitting perfectly straight on their fronts than dogs that have shorter backs or are built square. So like German short hair pointers, Doberman pinchers, for example, when they sit, they're just more compact because of the way that their bodies are designed. So the chances of them sitting straight are naturally higher than a dog with a long back like a Corgi because their front might be right in front of you, but their butt can swing easily out to either side. So I bought this thing just a few months ago and I call this a brick. I've heard other people call it a pot, but according to the sticker it's, that's inside, it's called a four quart pan. And you can definitely buy it at a couple different places. So I'm gonna leave some links in the description box for you in case you wanna try any of these games or exercises that I'm about to show you. I'm so thankful that I bought this because it has been instrumental and monumental in definitely improving Maya's fronts. It's super easy to teach your dog to put their paws up on the brick. Once they get that, you don't have to be too nitpicky about insisting on perfectly straight fronts quite yet, especially if it's your dog's first time doing this. Your goal is actually to get them to just move their back feet when you move. So lure them with the food in your hands and every time they move their back feet, praise and reinforce them even if it's not perfectly straight. As long as they're moving in the correct direction, that's fine for now. The ultimate goal, of course, is for them to adjust their rear end in conjunction with their front end when you move, creating a straight front. As they understand how to move their back feet, you can move on to the next step of luring them so that they are straight in front of you. Now, praise and reward for that criteria. Now, you, the dog doesn't get the treat for just shuffling their feet. They have to line up with you in order to earn their treat. Once they seem to be catching on, you can remove the lure entirely and just use your body to show your dog where you want them to be. Oh, nice dog. If you have a long back dog, like some of the breeds that we talked about earlier, you're probably going to see them try to sit while you're playing this game or you're doing these exercises with your brick. And that's totally fine. I love that Maya does that, but I wanna make sure that if you're doing these exercises with a dog that's normal backed, that you're not freaking out if your dog's not sitting. Your dog doesn't have to be sitting in order to play these games. It's not about getting them to sit straight. It's about getting them to understand that you want their whole body to be in line with yours. It's basically a game where you're saying, Psst, pay attention to your butt. Right, like a lot of dogs forget, like they have a rear end, they can't see it when they're doing their normal thing. So you wanna make sure that you're teaching them to move their body around completely, not just their front end. So your dog doesn't need to sit in order to be successful while playing these games. Once they're correctly rotating with you on a regular basis, you can combine this brick concept with a treat toss game. So throw a treat away from you and stand with your toes at the edge of your brick. As your dog eats the treat, tell them to come and encourage them to find front with the help of the brick. Maya and I have played this game quite a bit before, so don't forget that your dog might not be perfect right away. If they come back to you after cookie toss and they're crooked, help them out by either using the luring technique that we demonstrated earlier in this video or simply by rotating your body so that they have to refine front. But here's the catch. When they go and they get that treat, they come back and they are perfectly straight. Make sure that you show them the difference between progress and perfection. And that's really important for training any behavior, the idea of identifying progress versus perfection. Both are good, right? So like as a trainer, it's important to remember that you need to reward both because you want progress, but you also want perfection. They're both good, but one is better. You want perfection at the end of the day. So one of the most important things that you can do is you can reward progress, but there needs to be a bigger reward for perfection. So when your dog does something that you're saying like, yeah, you're on the right track, wasn't perfect, but it was pretty decent, maybe they get one treat. But when they're perfect, they do it absolutely right, and you're like, holy cow, that's zero points off and you didn't even need my help. Well, now instead of getting one treat, maybe they get three or four. When Maya and I are playing this game, if she gives me a crooked front, which she still occasionally does, then I will just readjust my body, she'll readjust hers, I'll praise her, and then her reward is to 
go through my legs or chase another cookie, sometimes both. And when she goes and she gets that other cookie, she has the opportunity to try again. So I'll call her to come to me. When she comes to me, if she gets it perfect this time, awesome. Now she gets three or four cookies. Progress and perfection are both good, but we want to make sure that we understand that perfection is better. So if both things are good, they both get rewards. But if one thing is better, then the reward has to be better. Occasionally during training, I'll ask Maya to do a couple formal call to fronts by healing up to the brick, halting, and then calling her just like I would in a rally competition. That way she practices the full motion. But personally, I prefer training concepts more often than I train particular exercises because at the end of the day, I think that actually makes my job as a handler way easier during trials. But feel free to mix and match a couple formal-ish call to fronts using the brick with some of these games that I showed you. Fronts are always going to be a little bit challenging for long back dogs, but for me, it's not an excuse to just shrug my shoulders and say, oh, well, she's a corgi, and so it's, quote, good enough for a corgi. It's like one of my least favorite phrases or when people say it's good enough for a corgi or it's good enough for a boxer or it's good enough for an insert other breed here. Like, I really hate that. I think it does a really big disservice to dogs' intelligence, to their athleticism, and to their willingness to work with and learn from people. So I'm just going to put in a little bit more effort, a lot more reinforcement value into behaviors that are challenging for my dog. For me, that means fronts. So the brick work has really worked out for us. I hope it works out for you too. If you try it, let me know how it goes in the comment section, or if you have a different suggestion as to what exercise and obedience or rally we should show you next or how we trained it, be happy to share those things with you guys. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up to let me know. And if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is hit subscribe and ring the bell. That way you get alerted every single time we post a new video. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us for this one. And remember that no matter what you do with your dog next, Good luck and have fun. See ya.